thanks. Thanks, 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 thanks so much for the troubled notes who were right away um, on board when we asked them to join us tonight. So thanks a lot for this welcoming note. And also a welcoming note from my side to uh, the award ceremony um, of the Human Rights Film Festival Berlin 2020. I'm Linnea Rinsberg, I'm your host for tonight, and I want to start right away because there are so many things to do tonight. So I'd like to welcome the festival director, Anna Ramskogler-Witt, to give us a little review of the festival right away. Welcome. Oh wow, 10 days of not sleeping. We are all still standing. This year, uh, we put quite a lot on our plate. We decided we will run a festival no matter what, even if there is a global pandemic. We were lucky enough to have a very good time frame so that we could actually host the festival offline and online. It was an experiment uh, which went, I think, rather well. We had amazing film guests here, and thank you so much to all of them for taking the efforts in this time to travel. That's not easy to say that. We... Uh, thank you also to all the film rights holders to join us on this adventure and allowing us to stream all the films also online giving people not just in Berlin, but all over Germany the opportunity to see these amazing documentaries. What I have to say at that point is, what is rather, rather really amazing is that we are allowed to show the film for 10 more days. So they will all be available until October 20th, which is... But this year we decided not only to do a film festival, but to try out something new. Because as you know, the Human Rights Film Festival Berlin is organized by a collaboration of three NGOs. And then we thought, okay, what do NGOs and the film festival actually have to, uh, in common? And we decided to try out a little experiment called the Human Rights Film Forum. Within the Human Rights Film Forum, we had six days of conferences with four conferences, and we talked a lot about how to use storytelling for a better world. And I have to say, like all these conferences, they were so, the speakers, the experts, the um, atmosphere in the room, it was so breathtaking, it was so amazing. I'm really glad that we also filmed it and that we do have it online so that we can rewatch it because there were speeches where I was like, oh wow, that's so much information, that's so amazing information, but it's just too much in six days so we can go back, look back and um, listen to those great speakers again. So a festival is never done by just one person. And what I decided is I will do a verbal credits line. So I would like to give, and that's the only time where I will read from a paper so I don't forget anyone. I would like to give credit to all the amazing people who supported me um, with their work. So I will start with Spoofa, our absolutely amazing host here in these wonderful studios, namely Lauren and Ellie. Without them, we would have never done that. They brought us here and they really convinced us to, to do it, to go through despite Corona because we do have enough space. So thank you to them. Uh, and also to the rest of the team, namely Hauke, who was running around every day, just bringing us everything that we needed, Benjamin and Tim and uh, the rest of the wonderful colleagues. Then, I mean, we, as I mentioned, we have three NGOs supporting us, and I would like to name some people who made it possible. First of all, a big thank you goes to Jan Sebastian Friedrich Rust, the director of uh, Action Against Hunger Germany, who like, he supported me with every crazy idea I had in my head, and he really gave me uh, the backhoe to make the festival really big. 
but also because I mean, there's a team behind everything, and I would like to thank the whole Action Against Hunger team, but I would like to highlight at this point, there will be more later, Leonie and Kira and Vasilius and Lisa, because they, they, they did get some of my crazy, <laughs> and they were like very calm, very supportive. Then with... Uh, with Save the Children, I want to do, say thank you to Paulina, who did it for the second year and wasn't like frightened to do it again. Uh, Lea, Martina, Claudia, Susanna, and their whole team. And now we are coming to our third partner, NRC Flüchtlingshilfe. And like, I stood downstairs with Pear, and he was like, I have been here practically every evening. So thank you for that, for hosting so many film talks, Pear, and for being on board again this year. That was like, your know, moderations are absolutely marvelous. They are like, listen to them. They are on our Facebook stream. He really knows how to touch people. But also to Tim and Sarah and the rest of the team who supported us in our forums idea. So that was really beautiful. Then we do have... I know it's a bit lot, but I also want to show that really it's not, I, it's, it's an effort of lots of people. So I'm going through quite quickly with the partners who supported us within the conferences that Cha and Artworks Project and the Hurti School and many, many more who uh, took over small parts. I also would like to thank the Interactive Media Foundation, who realized a small dream of mine, namely having a virtual reality exhibition. I was like very naive, saying, yeah, we are going to do that, and then they took over and did all the technical stuff so that we could really do it. So thank you to them. Of course, the festival also needs funders. So therefore, I would like to especially name uh, the Foreign Ministry, the GEZ, who funded us um, on behalf of the BMZ, the Hauptstadtkulturfonds, Olin Schöpflin, uh, the Postcode Lottery, uh, and Fritz Kohler, who really supported us for the third year. Thank you to them. And now we are coming to the people who stayed with me, me here day and night, one night, the complete night. Um, that's our technicians. Because you know, if you do a hybrid film festival, uh, you do need a lot, lots of technic. So I would like um, to say thank you to the sound guys, uh, Chi, Felix, Reno, and Flo. Thank you very much. I mean, Chi is here tonight again, and he's just doing a fantastic job. You couldn't show films without cinemas and uh, a projectionist. So I would like to say thank you to our cinemas, uh, Movimento, Akut, and Sputnik, and uh, to Merten and his crew, namely Patrick and Alex, who built in here just like that, a complete cinema with a complete cinema sound. So that was rather amazing. Thank you. And then, I mean, we do live stream everything, and I wasn't really aware about how difficult live streaming is and how much effort it is. So thank you very much to 48 Hearts Production, Jörn, Sören, Utz, and Lida, who are doing the cameras and the live streaming and all the little video clips that came in like two seconds before the next uh, presentation, and they just managed everything. I don't think we didn't manage one single issue, so please, Really, thank you so much. That was amazing. <laughs> and yes, I would have loved the Technic team to join me up front here, but I mean, they are the Technic team. They are working right now. But I would love to do that with my team. My team, uh, and I would like to come up front, like put, leave your masks on because Corona, you know that. But I would like to have one photo with us all together and the wheeler is doing us that favor. So I would like to say thank you to Merle for her. It was the second festival and she did an amazing job doing her Freiwilliges Soziales Jahr. <laughs> uh, 
And then I'm naming them rather fast, but they all did like, the, most of them, as you will see, are rather young, and they did a fucking amazing job. Sorry for that word. Hannah, Hannah, Charlotte, Martha, Karen, Vivian, Eva, Leonie, Maya. Um, <laughs> Kira, Sarah, Leah, and Basti. Of course, also Jan. Jan. And our lovely volunteers, like Laura, who should also come up front because she is going to stay with me for the next year. And I actually, Jan, and I actually don't say, see that much. If there are any other volunteers currently here and not working, please join us. I do miss Basti. Is he here? Basti! <laughs> he, he, he did all the little things for the SDG conference, like... <laughs> so... Wow. Yeah, and there are many more people like, who supported us. Uh, I, at that point, I also would like to mention my parents because they came here a few days before the festival. And every time I was like, ooh, I need something. They jumped into the car, drove somewhere in Berlin and brought that particular thing to me here to Bufa. So thank you so much, Maria and Peter. Like, really. I did forget one, one thing. I also have to say thank you to Maite Mao and the <laughs> Willy Brandt Foundation, uh, because otherwise we wouldn't be here today because we are awarding their award. So thank you so much, and also thank you to Peter Brandt, who you will say later. <laughs> and hopefully, truly, if I forgot someone, please excuse me, I, I, I do have like, I talked to Ellie the other day and she told me there's this thing like a festival prey and you, at some point you just feel as you would need a second slot where you could put in some more memory. <laughs> so thank you all for being here. And thanks for Sarah for organizing the flowers. <laughs> And to Lydia for handing them out and hosting uh, two, moderating two wonderful sessions. I could go on and on, but then we would get really late, so I should think I should rather stop. <laughs> Thank you. And what we are doing now, we are going off uh, rather fast so that we could finally start uh, with the program. And we all do have wonderful flowers for tomorrow. <laughs> so thanks so much for all of you. A last clapping hand. <laughs> Whew. Many people do work for this festival, don't they? But there are also a lot of people who watch all of the documentaries um, shown here by all of these people and many more. The audience. And the audience did do a little job as well. They decided upon their most favorite documentary film. And um, this year, Per Bühmann, who Anna just talked about, will be, he's the managing director of NRC Flüchtlingshilfe, and he will hold a, um, a laudatory speech just for the audience award. So, Per, would you like to join me here on stage? It would be a pleasure. Where are you? Thank you very much, Linnea, and thank you, Anna, also for a fantastic festival and for those nice words before. Uh, and thank you to the organizers for giving me the honor to present the audience award. I wish I had one of these golden envelopes now. You can go and sort of 
question. And the winner is, but I don't. And I also wish that the uh, t fantastic technicians here could lower my voice a bit <laughs> so I get the Hollywood uh, <clears throat> power behind it. I don't have that, so I'll do it anyway. The Audience Award goes to an outstanding film and also an extremely important film showing the bravery of one woman. And as you may have seen, a lot of the films this year were about very strong and powerful women and their fights. This woman just wants to live her life. She didn't ask to become an activist in the middle of a fight between David and Goliath. But despite all challenges, threats, and intimidation, she stands up to fight for her ancestors' land. The journey that she, her family, and her lawyer are going through is incredible. And it highlights the misuse of corporate power, environmental issues, indigenous rights, and sense of belonging. Their fight is still ongoing, and it needs to be visible in society today. The director did an extraordinary job portraying the strength of this woman with beautiful pictures and very strong camera settings that complemented by the archive material. She takes you into the wide plateau of the Andes, conveys the beauty of the landscape, and at the same time, creates a deeper understanding for this woman's fight. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud and happy to announce the Audience Award goes to Maxima, directed by Claudia Sparrow. Considero la tierra y yo lo amo a la tierra como si fuera mi madre. Nuestras aguas es nuestra vida. The Anacocha is one of the largest gold mines in the world. Like a pyramid downwards. They have a tremendous impact on communities that depend on the land for survival. Quieto. Mining operations are impossible with human presence there. They need Maxima's land. Que todo lo que es la laguna es puro oro. Si yo dejo esta tierra, la empresa va a quedar acá y esta tierra se va a quedar un desierto. The company continues to claim that it's their land, she doesn't have the right to be there. You can't use violence against a family with whom you have a land dispute. No quieren dejar el precedente de que una mujer campesina les puede torcer el brazo. Peru is one of the most dangerous countries for human rights and activists. She became a very visible person for human rights movement. Yo he nacido en el campo, y en el campo voy a morir. No será malo estar con el sombrero. Me encontré alegre, pero como no sé leer. Yo soy una jaqueñita. It's not just about her family's land, but people who might be in similar situations all over the world. Yo defiendo la tierra. The reason why I sneak up here is we just got like four minutes ago, because we do have a huge time difference to LA, 
uh, a video message by the director, Claudia Sparrow, and the guys are doing something incredible again back there. They are trying to make it possible that we see it up here. So I think we just need one more minute and then we will see um, Claudia. And uh, for us, it was important to give her that opportunity, even if we do have like a little time to spend now <laughs> in here, <laughs> where we have uh, to bridge the waiting time. Perfect. Making but it more When did she get to know that she won the prize? Today in the morning, which is basically in the middle of the night in uh, Los Angeles, and we just had a phone call before we started here, and she was like, oh yeah, I would love to join you in person, but unfortunately, <laughs> I'm going to speak in, a, in front of a classroom about the film and uh, Maxima's incredible work. So I'm teaching while your award ceremony is happening. happening. And then she was going outside, of, uh, standing in front of the classroom, like doing that video, which we are hopefully seeing in a moment. Cool. But I so can uh, maybe... What was her reaction? Uh, she was excited. She was a bit tired, I think, <laughs> because it's rather early. And she was a bit sad that she couldn't be here in person uh, or even on a live stream, but I think it's super that she reacted so spontaneously. And I just got the sign that I now really may leave the stage. And perfect. I'll do her. it as well, and we'll listen to Claudia. Congratulations. Good evening, everybody. I'm Claudia Sparrow. I'm the director of the documentary feature film Maxima. And we just heard the wonderful news that Maxima has won the Audience Award at the Berlin Human Rights Film Festival. And we couldn't be more thankful for your support. Thank you to you, the audience, for taking the time to watch the film, for supporting Maxima's cause. Now more than ever, we need to help activists like Maxima. Uh, we need to promote their voices, to give them larger, larger platforms and do anything that we can to help and support causes that uh, at the end of the day affect all of us. So thank you again for taking the time to watch the film, for supporting it. And if you are interested in learning more or wanna know what you can do to help, um, you can visit our website, standwithmaxima.com, and you can see different ways that you, get, you can get involved. You can donate to her GoFundMe campaign. You can sign the petition to demand that Newman stops the harassment to Maxima and her family. You can also host the screenings of the film and other things that you can do. No action is small when it comes to important issues like this one. Thank you again so much for your support. You have no idea how much it means to us and also what big difference this is gonna help us do in continuing to push Maxima's story forward. So thank you so much. Oh, what a pleasure listening to her and that we had the chance, thanks to the Technic guys back there. Um, we do have the chance to listen to a musical intervention for one minute. So please, the troubled notes, just join us on stage for one more song.
and I think that set a bit the scene for our next, probably most exciting part of the whole ceremony here. We will soon get to know uh, not just the nominees, but afterwards also the winning uh, film of the Willy Brandt Documentary Award for Freedom and Human Rights. The prize is intended to co uh, commemorate Willy Brandt's achievements as German Chancellor and Nobel Prize winner, and to support outstanding filmmakers whose work exemplifies Willy Brandt's values. The prize is also endowed with 3,000 euros by the Federal Chancellor Willy Brandt Foundation. Let's watch the 10 nominees. Dos años antes de que asesinaran a Javier, decidí buscar a Carmen pues acababan de censurar su programa de la Radio Nacional, privándome, como a millones de mexicanos, de mi derecho a escucharla. Hello. Ej, šta ima? Darija je. <laughs> šta ti radiš u kancelariji što nis na terenu? <laughs> e, ajde malim te terena te zovem, pa treba mi pravira jedna u bazi. Latinović Zorka, nestala osoba. Parce que des gens qui venaient faire des images avec une telle idée negative. On les représente toujours et il n'a pas pris ce temps de se représenter lui-même. She was on the top of her game. I felt empty inside me. I realized that there's so many problems in this society. So I choose the activist way. You can be afraid to talk about it. To talk about it. But if you don't start, Nobody will start. As it goes, it's all. Enough is enough. Step up. Stand for. Speak out. Accept something less. Do you want to get locked up with those other kids? This is your last chance. They're not going to take my grandchildren away from me. What our stories told to our children. Que todo lo que es la laguna es puro oro. Si yo dejo esta tierra, la empresa se va a quedar acá y esta tierra se va a quedar un desierto. The company continues to claim that it's their land. She doesn't have the right to be there. You can't use violence against a family with whom you have a land dispute. <laughs> Before the winner is announced, we'll listen to the reasons for the decision of the jury. I'll invite Marche de Koning on stage, who will speak in the name of Malte Mau, Christoph Stresser, and Martina Dase, who decided upon it. Marte de Koning. Thank you very much. 
before saying anything, I'm a festival director as well in the Netherlands, and I'm extremely impressed, Anna, the others, what you have been doing here this whole week, tonight, and I'm a filmmaker in heart and soul. I've been making films for a long time, and seeing these films, you made such an incredible selection. Having said that, as you can understand, for us, it was not completely easy. There was no subject who didn't matter. There was no film where you could say, oh, ah, the montage was a little bit sloppy. I didn't like the soundscape. The DOP cameraman, not so sure about the work. They were all actually fantastic. They were 10 incredible films. I've had the honor to, work quite a, to speak quite to some of the teams. They're all dedicated, they all fight for their cause, and they all think that film, and I think that's why we're all here together tonight, can make a change. That film can be a starting point of a discussion and of a dialogue. On that note, I'll read the jury report. The jury was impressed by the strong selection of the films. I just said that. The jury, but, had to focus. It focused on the process of the selecting for the Willy Brandt Award, on the quality of the documentary, the possible impact of the film, and of course, if the film reflected the values Willy Brandt was politically standing for. It was really hard to choose, so we couldn't leave it to only one film. <laughs> so, we give a special mention. And we give that special mention to a film which we thought was, in a way, the best discussion piece. It was a very well-made film, but all films are very well-made film. But in the moment of time we're living in, where Black Lives Matter, where we need to look at each other, can I make a film on your culture? Can you make a film on my culture? We thought that we have to single out, for that reason, one film. And that film is Stop Filming Us. The film steers up the debate, which is going on constantly. It's an extremely important to open up that discussion how difficult cultures are portrayed in the media. So I'm very honored to say to the team of, it's a Dutch team, of Stop Film, Dutch, and from Kishasha team, Congo team, um, uh, I'm honored to say you have a very special mention. And now, of course, there's a winner. It always got to be the winner. The winner of the 2020 William Brandt Documentary Prize goes to... I'm not as good as him. Softy. And they're here. They're here. A single person falls to a need, and that makes a big difference. In light of the democracy being under threat worldwide, a person fights for democracy regardless of the outcome. The access to the main character, letting the camera into his life of himself and his family, is incredible. In a world where in so many countries democracy is at risk and under pressure, it's highly important this issue is addressed in this fantastic film. The artistic craftsmanship of the filmmaker is outstanding. It's seldom, and I can say that from experience, that content, relevance, and outstanding filmmaker work together in the film. And it did with Softy. Director Sam Sokos created an outstanding film. Its story and its protagonist's fight for democracy truly reflect the spirit, spirit of the Willy Brandt's life and political work. But before we call on them on stage, I would very much like to give the word to Peter Brandt. Yes. Peter Brandt. Join us on stage, historian and member of the board of the Federal Chancellor Willy Brandt Foundation. And we'll listen to a laudatory speech from your side. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. 
Dear documentary film lovers, dear Neri Wangi and Sam Soko, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to honor an outstanding documentary film and award uh, the 2020 Willy Brandt Documentary Prize for Freedom and Human Rights. As a professional historian member of the Federal Chancellor Willy Brandt Foundation Board of Trustees and Willy Brandt's eldest son, it's my great pleasure to present the award against again this year. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the festival organizers. It is wonderful to have the Human Rights Film Festival in Berlin for the third time. Thank you very much. I think they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Documentary Film Prize commemorates Willy Brandt's achievements as German Chancellor and international statesman. It celebrates filmmakers whose work is exemplary of Willy Brandt's principles. Throughout his life, Willy Brandt worked for peace and freedom, domestic and global social justice the promotion of democracy and the reconciliation of understanding between peoples. 50 years ago, the West German treaties with Moscow and Warsaw were the breakthrough of the new Ostpolitik of the German Federal Republic. For this, Willy was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize a year later. On December 7th, 1970, the day the treaty was signed in Warsaw, he participated in a wrath-laying ceremony at the monument commemorating the 1943 Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. In an inspiring move, he now to commemorate the millions of victims of the genocide committed by Hitler's Germany. He, who was personal, uh, not all responsible for the horrendous crimes committed, but was ra rather actively fighting against the Nazis. The picture of his Kniefall resonated um, around the world, a Christian gesture asking for forgiveness for his people. His kneeling in Warsaw is one of the German Federal Republic's symbolic moments. Some even consider it one of the most notable gestures of reconciliation and humility ever made by a head of state. Those who know me well know that as a close relative, I am reluctant to speak about Willy Brandt. Nevertheless, I can say with complete conviction that in view of today's existential problems humanity is facing, we could all, not just his party members, use him today. We all can learn something from him from his way of dealing with other people, even those with different views and values. Much of this was reflected in the competition films. People become activists and fight against oppression and exploitation, and standing up for freedom of speech and democracy, just to name just a few of the topics. I'm very pleased to welcome Nieri Mwangi on stage this evening, as well as Sam Soto, the director of the film. Softy may be a nickname for Nieri's husband, but it is her strength as an activist, as a mother, and as a partner that gives the film that 
special something. Only an outstanding director can bring all this to the screen. Sam Soko not only accompanied an activist for over seven years, he also created an extraordinary work of filmmaking about people caught between personal convictions and values and threats to their and their families' lives. Up to the last shot, the film illustrates the importance of the decision to stand up for democracy. Willy Brandt fought for his values and democratic convictions during Germany's Nazi dictatorship. Like the family in this wonderful film, he also fled into exile. Later, he returned to politics and like Softy, <coughs> had to endure many defeats before becoming the German Chancellor and a Nobel Prize laureate. The world needs people who fight for freedom and justice. Some even succeed in changing the world. Today, human rights and democracy are facing great challenges. Even in the US and more and more countries in Europe, Authoritarian governments and populist parties of the right are challenging demetric, democratic values and rules. Look into your heart and ask yourself, how can I make a difference? The film Softy and its protagonists are shining example of people's power to do good. They are a reminder to us all not to take democracy for granted, but rather, as Willy Brandt famously said, dare more democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to present the 2020 Willy Brandt Documentary Prize for Freedom and Human Rights for the film Softy. Congratulations. Or at a later point, it's just a simmer for uh, what's happening because the machine that should do the award um, broke down. So, <laughs> okay, they, th they will get a, a, they will better, get a, version. a better version. They will get a better version. They will get like a proper. <laughs> Uh, you will first have the opportunity to talk, and then we are going to watch a wonderful trader. <laughs> Thank you so much, by the way. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are waiting for a screening tomorrow. <laughs> um, thank you so much for, for honoring the film and honoring Jerry and Boniface's fam family. And I am just a witness to 
an incredible love story um, for my country and a story uh, in their lives. And it's, it's amazing to see the film being understood by Germans. <laughs> <laughs> And and I think, like like you said, uh, this is it's such a critical moment in time that we need to be bolder and stronger and continue to be louder in articulating conversations and narrative in the protection of democracy, because it is not as strong as we think it is, and it can easily disappear while we are watching. So, um, as I, my brain is still looking for words, I am thankful, I am grateful, and I would like to honor the incredible team behind the film, from my, my family in LBX Africa, with my other family, um, my co-producers, We Are Not The Machine, and my other co-producers in Canada, I still film. And all the supporters, if you watch the film, the credits are ridiculously long. <laughs> but they're ridiculously long because of the ridiculous, amazing love we have received from the amazing supporters who saw us through a seven-year journey. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You have to speak. I know you can do it. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. Um, thank you so much for this great honor. Um, I think a lot has been said in that film, but what I would want to say, maybe just to add, is that it is not just my story. It is the story of every activist that you have heard of, that you have seen, and some, their lives are so much difficult, and some have lost their lives. And I'm lucky that mine is still intact. So my call to us is that we may be active citizens, that we may support causes that we believe in, in every way, and we might, that we might stand up for what is right because there's a lot of injustice in this world. And some of us are just watching it happen, and we shouldn't, because it should not be happening. So wherever you are, do what you can. Nothing is little. Do the little that you can. Those little things together make all the difference, and that's what makes change. And the, the things that have been achieved as freedoms that you enjoy, there are people who lost their lives for those, so guard them and protect them. Yeah, thank you. your microphones and thanks so much but just the film is very powerful you are so powerful so so thanks for being here and not just letting us watch the movie itself or the film itself so thank them And while they're all leaving the stage, we could think of, oh, done already? No, there's one more award we have to take out. It's a special one, and it's the first year it's getting awarded. And it's called the Honorary Prize for Peace and Democracy. Awarded to a person with outstanding achievements in the area of human rights, peace and democracy. 
and while they're taking pictures, I look at the person behind the photographers. It's Bettina Jarasch, and she'll be the one awarding this prize. She's a journalist and politician here in Berlin, and I'm very glad you're here to let us know who's the winner. Thanks a lot. First of all, I want to say that I'm very honored by having been, been invited here rather spontaneously. Um, it makes me glad to be here because um, all the uh, stories of all those political activists we have seen here and really even can met in, in person makes also our political work, gives, gives us a new direction, a new sense and a new urgency to our work here. So thank you. We are all looking at the dramatic developments in Belarus. Since the ob obviously manipulated election results in favor of dictator Lukashenko in the presidential election on August 9, courageous citizens are taking their protest for freedom to the streets. They speak up against the authoritarian regime and take a stance for the rule of law, democracy and freedom. The regime's response to the peaceful and non-violent protests is unacceptable. Brutal violence, arrests, disappearances and torture are a tragic reality for many of the protesters. We must not and will not tolerate this. We stand together with the democratic opposition and demand an end to the violence and the immediate release of all political prisoners. The protests in Belarus are supported by a broad social alliance. The face of this democracy move movement is above all female. It is like the face of this festival here, by the way. <laughs> it is strong women who continue to take to the streets and demonstrate despite the dangers. It is the courage of these women that is at the heart of the protests. They want the system to change. Today, we would like to honor one of the most important protagonists of the democracy movement with the honorary award for peace and democracy newly created by the film festival. She says about herself that she never wanted to become a politician. But by the will of fate, I was faced with an election, a choice between freedom and fear, between truth and lies, between love for my own country and obedience to the system. In the aftermath of the obviously falsified elections, in which she was a presidential candidate and one of the central figures of the protest movement, she had to leave the country in fear of her family. She lives now in exile in Lithuania, continuing her peaceful fight for a democratic future for the people of Belarus. It is an honor to welcome <laughs> the Belarusian opposition politician Svetlana Tichanovskaya and to award her the first honorary prize for peace and democracy. Thank you, Ms. Yarash, for the laudatory speech. Thank you, Human Rights Film Festival Berlin, for awarding me with the honorary prize for peace and democracy. You excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored and grateful for this award. But this award is not for me. It is for all Belarusian people. Without their courage, their dignity and their unity, I wouldn't have stood here in front of you. Today, as I'm receiving this award, I want to say how easy it is sometimes to take freedom for granted. But don't be fooled. Freedom is something you have to fight for. Belarusian people are doing this at this very moment. We are trying to defend who we are, a free-thinking as European nation, against a dictator trying to quell us into submission. As he understands it, 
Freedom is when you are a YouTube blogger Sergei Tikhanovsky tells the truth about bureaucracy and corruption in Belarus and gets jailed for this. Activist Stepan Latipov defends political street art and gets jailed for this. Women's leader Maria Kolesnikova tears her own passport to pieces not to be kicked out of the country and gets jailed for this. Journalist Igor Losik writes the truth about politics in Belarus and gets jailed for this. Mediator Lydia Vlasova joins the Coordination Council to solve the political crisis and gets jailed for this. Famous basketball player Alena Levchenko supports protest against the regime and gets jailed for this. Lawyer Maxim Znak explains the laws and people's rights and gets jailed for this. Maina Yuri Korzun handcuffs himself underground in protest against the state violence and gets jailed for this. Human rights activist Hanna Rabkova conducts trainings for the volunteers and gets jailed for this. Worker Sergei Delevsky organizes a strike against falsified elections and gets jailed for this. Photographer Alexander Vasilievich covers the women's protests and gets jailed for this. I could provide you with 13,000 similar stories, as 13,000 people have gone through detention counters over the last two months. For reference, it's more than in two years of martial law in Poland. However, the dictator and his cronies do not understand that even if you are in jail, you can remain free. They can steal your physical freedom, but they can't steal freedom of thought and freedom of conscience. They can't grasp the fact that Belarusians are free-minded European people and they can't change this. And that's why we will prevail. This year, Belarusians understood what freedom means. To strive, to fight, to care on defending who you are. After 2020, we will never forget the value of freedom. It's hard to achieve freedom, but very easy to lose it. I appeal to all of you in this audience Always stand for freedom and protect it when it is under threat. Again, thank you for this award and thank you for your support of Belarusian fight for freedom. After this tough one, I'll ask Jan Sebastian Friedrich Rust on stage. I think most of you know him, but let me explain it again. He's the CEO of Action Against Hunger Germany, and you founded this festival three years ago. So how does it feel to see your baby grow? Well, I mean, first of all, thank you everyone for, for being here tonight in this, uh, yeah, very special circumstances and making your way out. I mean, it was a, a very different festival for us because, because uh, obviously uh, we, we had planned with a big uh, opening and closing at Kino Internationales last year and we're so happy that Buffa hosted us here and, and made it possible for us to, to work under these circumstances to keep distance and to be in these wonderful surroundings. Before I answer that, I mean, uh, I think really Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, it's, it's, it's just incredible and uh, what, what she's doing. I mean, fighting against one of the uh, most brutal dictators that we have now uh, currently and one of the uh, biggest issues we, we see in Europe now politically and we see um, 
just today that, that Lukashenko mentioned that he, 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 will decide, he has decided and is, is threatening the opposition to, to go with full force uh, and violence against them. And it, I think it's so important that we can set a sign and that also politicians uh, will really find a way to, to put pressure on the German government and the European government to really do everything we can to be a counterbalance uh, for, uh, against Russia, who are intervening in this conflict. It's reminding us very much again of what happened in Ukraine uh, just a few years ago. And if Europe does not take its lead this time, and if we as Germany do not take the lead, and I'm very happy that Bettina Jarasch, uh, as an important politician in Berlin, has spoken, is this, this country will, will have a very difficult future. So we have a role to play. Um, I think, uh, apart from that, I mean, it's been a very different festival this year. We are very happy that we could realize this hybrid version. Uh, we had more audience than in the previous years. I can say so much already. So, so that, that in itself is an upside. But of course, yeah, uh, the lack of, of contact with, with people is, 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 is the big downside, obviously. Yeah. But we, we could invite more people. We had, uh, and I'll come to that later, we had more than 100 speakers from all over the world at our really extensive site program. And I don't think, I mean, we had welcome messages from, from Antonio Guterres. Or something. I don't think these things would have been possible in normal times. So. so besides the hybrid festival, was there anything else different? Um, I mean, there was made a big change yeah. um, talking to that camera, talking to yeah, you, yeah. and you know, having all the technical stuff. Uh, so much more yeah. work. But what else was different? Well, I mean, uh, I'm already known in my organization, Action Against Hunger, as the one who always has too many ideas and, and wants to do too many things, and I'm always stopped by my team. And when Anna came on board in the festival two years ago, I realized there's a person who has even more <laughs> vision and more ideas, and I, now I have to stop her. Because, uh, um, so it's a, we're interesting combination there. But, but I mean, we had a six-day six day side events. We had more than 100 guests you know, from all over the world participating. So I think that really changed. We, we, when we started the festival, it was about how can we use film as documentary film to, to reach people and to open their eyes and open their minds to really the, the stories that are behind what we hear, what we hear in Syria. We opened with For Sama last year. And, and these kind of films, to really see the stories and to reach people's minds and, and hearts about we have to do something. Because, because we are fatigued by newspaper. But this year, Anna, and, and I'm really proud of that, has is, is really established this forum, which really brought politicians, filmmakers, journalists together to, to, to work on climate change. And we had an amazing conference organized by two colleagues from Action Against Hunger, Kira and Anna, uh, Kira and, and Leonie, but also from colleagues from Save the Children and NRC, our main partners. So I think that really is the next level, that we're really opening dialogue. And there's so many things that came out of that uh, conference, really. So. Very yes. proud of that, huh? Yeah, definitely. Cool. So the festival is nearly done, but yeah. there's still this night and tomorrow. So yeah. what else do we have to expect? So I'm happy to announce that, I mean, you've seen uh, two, film, uh, two films have won tonight. Softy was, in fact, our opening film. So I'm so, so thankful for Sam and, and Neri for, for staying here, because they were here on the first day, 10 days ago. And we, said, we, we knew a few days after the opening that who, the, the jury decided who would be winning this year. And they decided to stay for, for another week. So I'm so thankful for them. It's, it's, it's really great for staying. And tomorrow at 8 PM, they will be here for, for their final screening uh, at, at 8 PM, sorry. At a, there will be a final screening of Softy, so I really invite all of you. It's an amazing film and a very inspiring uh, yeah, story. And um, I'm happy that tonight, because we already opened with Softy, we cannot close with it, we will show the audience award, Maxima, which is a really unbelievable story of Maxima Acuna, who's, a, who's an activist from Peru, who's, who's forced, or basically nearly forced by a multinational company to leave her land, to, to, to uh, a project financed by the World Bank, to give up her existence, even though she had a right to that land, but she didn't stop. She fought until she went to court, and, and she has a huge international support. So it's, it's really a very inspiring story. She's still fighting and still needs our support. So I, I think that's an inspiring story. But before I end, I just want to say, because Anna was bringing everyone on stage and saying thank you. So really, thank you, Anna, uh, because you've, you've, done, you've made this uh, great festival possible. So it's, it's, it's a great honor. So that's it. So now Anna is gone and Jan left the stage as well and I'm the only one left on it. Um, 
The only thing I can say is that after watching Maxima, you have the chance to go downstairs and have a little reception. Um, also with music by the Troubled Notes. So they're outside as well, enjoy it. And also enjoy food and drinks. And that's the only thing I have to say right now, to say thank you to, the, um, to those who sponsor all of these drinks. It's Campari, it's Fritz, it's Scher, and Weingut Fürst Hohenlohe Oering. And with this, I'll let you watch Maxima enjoy it and enjoy the reception afterwards. It was a great film festival till now and I hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Have a great one. <laughs>